Alright ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our next video on environmental science and finishing up our birding series and identifying common birds in our area. Let's get started on this next video. Alright, so the next bird that we're going to go through and look at is the common red pole. Now the common red pole is as energetic as their electric zapping call notes and would suggest. Common red poles are active foragers that travel in busy flocks. Look for them feeding on catkins and birch trees or visiting feeders in the winter. Now, the common red pole is going to inhabit open woodlands. It's mostly going to consume seeds for food. It's going to nest in the shrubbery and it's going to again be a foliage gleaner and it's going to have low concern for conservation. And we're mostly going to see these in the winter up north. In the winter, they're going to be scarcely spattered in our area and year round, they're going to be really far up north. Breeding, they're actually going to move into the northern parts of Alaska, and they're going to breed all the way up into that Arctic Circle area there. Now, some of the common features of the common red pole are going to be, well, they're going to be that red forehead that we see at the very front. It has a wing bar. We see this brown speckled underbelly. We also see this bright yellow beak. These are going to be these distinguishing features that we're going to see. Now the common red pole is going to sound and look like this. All right, the next bird that we're gonna go through and look at is the Carolina chickadee. Carolina chickadees are curious, intelligent, and they look very much like a black cap chickadee with a black cap, black bib, and gray wings. Carolina and black cap chickadees hybridized in the area with the, where their ranges overlap but the two species probably diverged more than 2.5 million years ago. Now, if we look at the Carolina chickadee, we're going to see it mostly takes up the southeastern part of the United States. It's going to inhabit forests. It's going to consume insects for food. It's going to nest in cavities among trees, and it's also going to be a foliage gleaner with low concern for conservation. Now, some distinguishing features for the Carolina chickadee. The distinguishing features are going to be this black crown and supercilium here, tan and gray underbelly. We're going to see this white nape. We're also going to see white auriculars, and then we're going to see a black malar. We're going to be able to use the black and white patterns to go through and identify this chickadee. Now the Carolina chickadee is going to look and sound like this. All right, so the next bird that we're gonna go through and look at is the Eastern Tohi. And the Eastern Tohi is a strikingly marked oversized sparrow of the East, feathered in bold, black, warm, reddish browns. And if you can get a clear look at it, the Eastern Tohis are birds of the undergrowth. And we see them rummaging far, and they make noise that you wouldn't expect for their size. Now, if we look at the map, we can see the breeding region up North, mig migratory regions, non-breeding, and then we can see the year-round regions. They're normally going to be up here for breeding. Now we can see that their habitat is going to be shrubbery. They're going to go through and be an omnivore, They're going through and consuming food, both insects and seeds. They're going to nest on the ground, ground foragers, and low concern for conservation. Now some of the distinguishing features that we go through and look at on our bird here, we're going to have this orange side, a white underbelly. We're going to see a black crown and supercilium, and then we're going to see these bright red eyes. Now the eastern towhee is going to look and sound like this. All right, so the next bird that we're gonna look at is the hairy woodpecker. And hairy woodpeckers are the larger of the two look-alikes, and the hairy woodpecker is small but powerful and forages along trunks, main branches of large trees. Wields much longer bill than the downy woodpecker, almost more of a thorn-like bill. 
So if we look at the hairy woodpecker, they're going to inhabit forests, eat insects for food, they're going to go through and nest in cavities, they're going to be bark foragers and low concern for conservation. We can see the range of these is going to take up most of North America. Now if we look at some of the distinguishing features of the hairy woodpecker, we're going to see a red nape. We're also going to see this very long beak here. It's longer than the downy woodpecker. Similar size speckled primaries here. And then we're also going to see this black eye line. Now the hairy woodpecker is going to look and sound like this. All right, now lastly, we have the red-winged blackbird. Red-winged blackbirds are one of the most abundant birds across North America, one of the most boldly colored. The red-winged blackbird is a familiar sight atop cattails, along soggy roadsides, and on telephone pole wires. We can see that they breed up north, and they're going to inhabit almost all of the continental U.S. They're going to go through and inhabit marshes, eat insects for food, nest along shrubbery, and be ground foragers, and again, their conservation concern is low. If we look at some of the distinguishing features of the red-winged blackburn, what we see are red and yellow wing bars, along with a black head and beak. Now, red-winged blackbirds are going to sound and look like this. All right, so did you guys learn? Well, did you learn a couple of things? Did you guys go through and learn distinguishing features for each bird? Did you guys go through and learn about the range and habitat of each bird? And did you guys go through and hear the bird calls? This is going to be the end of the video. I will see you all in class tomorrow.